everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today we are going to be hand dyeing some yarn. So I did a video the other day showing you some of the yarn that I'd already dyed and some of you asked me to do a video showing you how to do it. So today we are just going to be using the microwave and we are going to do it in part one and part two. Um, I hope you're going to be able to see everything okay. I've had to prop my phone up on a load of books. So first of all, you will need to soak your yarn and you will need to soak it for about 20 to 30 minutes with about half a cup of white vinegar or maybe a teaspoon of citric acid, which comes like this in the UK and you can get it in any chemist. So, you will need some gloves, that is a must. And if you see the state of these, you will know why. Now, it's best to use a natural fibre like wool or cotton. And this one I'm using here is a cotton polyester blend. And because polyester doesn't dye very well, it will turn out like this. So I'm actually using six different colours. You can use rib dye, which I'm using some of, and also food colouring works just as well. So I'm using a mixture of food colouring and the rib dye. And I'm going to do this one in sort of like a rainbow colour. So once you've got your yarn out from your bowl of soaking, you need to try and get as much water out as you can and then you need to tie it in about six places and what I do I do top and bottom and then two either side and that is just to stop it getting from tangled and knotted up. I then put down some tin foil and then lay my yarn down on that with the sections apart. You will then need to put on your gloves And I've already started with this red colour. I don't know if you can see that very well. I'll try and move this table a bit forward. Um, I don't know. Can you see it? Yeah, so it doesn't matter if it starts blending into the other sections. That's what gives it its charm. So I'm just going to carry on with this red one. And... As you see, all my other colours are already in bottles. This red one I just made up because I didn't have a red one. And I'm also using a syringe to put it into the yarn. Now this red one is just food colouring. So I just squirted some into the cup and then put that cup about half full with warm water and give it a stir. So it's all mixed in nicely. So I've now nearly done this section. And you want to keep pressing it down quite firmly so that the dye absorbs into the underneath part. But also you don't want it sopping wet either. So now on to the next one and I'm going to do orange. I think this one was, yeah. So let me know if you can see this properly. I'm going to try and adjust this camera just slightly. I can't do it. Is that better? That's a little better, I think. So now I'm just gonna, I'm gonna do it like, I'm not gonna do red and orange, yellow, but I'm doing red and then this one, orange, this one, yellow. I'm gonna do green and blue 
and then purple. So I'm just going to give this a shake. And this orange one was also food colouring as well. And because it's already in the bottle, I'm just going to squirt it and shake it all over until I have enough on there. All the while patting it down. And where you have it tied off in sections, just make sure you press down on there quite firmly so that it dyes the pieces that are tied. Oops, I've done a bit too much there. So that's now my orange one done. I'm now going to go on to the yellow one. I'm not too worried about getting these ones all over the place because food colouring is so easy to clean up and it doesn't stain. Whereas the red dye does and you will see me being a lot more careful with those ones. So yellow one I'm going here. Right on the edge. Now of course you can do yours any colour you want. You can either stick to one colour or you can do several colours like I'm doing. And just spread those pieces of yarn aside to make sure the colour has got all the way through. That one has. So I am now going to do green and I'm going back up here. And the green one is in a spray bottle and I don't want it sprayed. So I'm just going to take the top off and pour it slowly. Now this green one is a mixture of blue rip dye and red food colouring. So I'm going to be a bit more slightly careful with this one. I don't want it all over the work surface. Oops. Tiny bit more. And if you can't see what I'm doing, then I will bring the camera in a bit closer uh, once I've put these gloves off. So now I am going on to blue. Now you see on this orange one, it's got a bit of green in there, but that really doesn't matter. It just adds to the charm. So the blue one is in also a spray bottle. So I'm going to be careful with this one because this is the rip dye and the rip dye comes in a powder form. I got mine on eBay for about £3.50 and you just mix it in with hot water. So I'm just going to put the blue one here. Being very careful with this one. And also any that you don't use, you just put the top back on and you can use it next time. So that one's done. I've got one more left to do and uh, I'm just going to pop that up there. I will show you why you need gloves. You do not want that rip dye all over your hands because you will never get it off. So I need a cloth. Right, that will do. 
old cloth. So I am now doing purple. This is not in a spray bottle. This one, you can't see it very well. I'm just going to pull that back over there. So it's this one here, right at the bottom of the camera. Now, I don't like this purple one much. You didn't... Um, try not to square. <laughs> um, it's a bit too dark for my liking this purple, but we'll see what it's like when it comes out. So just, again, make sure it's soaked all the way through. take these gloves off for a moment and bring the camera in a bit closer let's hope I don't drop it so if you can see so that is red then we have green and then orange blue yellow and purple. Now they are well saturated. So yes, I know I don't have gloves on, but you want to make sure where it's tied that it's well soaked through. So I'm just going to put the camera back where it was. So what you need to do after you have done all your yarn, you need to transfer it over to a piece of cling film. Now I've already got a piece of cling film ready over there. And so, and I don't have gloves on and I'm going to be quick. <laughs> so. My yarn is now on this piece of cling film over here. And now because I don't want my colours mixing up too much, I have got two separate smaller pieces of cling film. And I'm just going to lay that one over there. And then I have another piece and I am going to lay it in the opposite side. And then all I'm going to do is half it over. You don't want to do it up too tightly. And then all you are going to do is slip it onto the plate. And it should be done a bit better than this. So I can do my cling film big enough. So I'm just going to go over it again like this. So it's well wrapped up. The colours shouldn't mix together too much. And then I am going to put it in the microwave. Sorry, I'm just, I don't want to make your camera sick. So all I'm going to do, sorry, I had to move my microwave onto the oven so I'd have enough space on here. I am just going to put it in the microwave. Make sure your setting is on high and put it on for about 10 minutes. Now you just want to leave it alone now for the 10 minutes while it does its thing and then I will be back with you once it's done. So it's been 10 minutes now and I've just got it out of the microwave but please, please, please be aware that when you get it out this plate is extremely, extremely hot so you will need something to take it out with. I don't want anybody burning themselves. 
So, as you can see, it is very hot, but you just want to leave it like that until it cools down. And you will need to make sure it cools right down. And then once it's cooled down, you get it out of the cling film and then you want to rinse it under cold water until the water runs clear. After you've done that, you just want to get some uh, washing up liquid and rub it in all over and then rinse it out again, making sure everything runs clear. And then all you do, you just leave in the ties where you've tied it in places and you hang it up to dry. And then I will show you what comes next in part two of this video after it has dried. So in part two, we'll, we'll be do, undoing the ties, undoing the yarn and then hanging it all up. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Um, please tell me whether it is absolutely rubbish or not, but I did try my best and I think I need to invest in a proper tripod or something. So I tried to get you to see as much as possible, but I'm really sorry if you didn't see much. So please let me know whether this video is any good or not. So I'm just going to lift it up slightly. Some of the colours have blended in together, but we will see what it's like once I rinse it out. And also I can tell the purple has mixed in with the red because I didn't cover it properly. Um, so I really don't know how this one's going to turn out. But you will see in the next video probably tomorrow. So that's all for now and I will see you tomorrow. Bye.